This is Professor uh, Joseph. We are on to um, Section 2.4, Definitional Techniques. Um, again, we're in Chapter 2, Language, uh, Meaning, and Definition. So what I'll do is just go straight to... Back. Okay, 2.4. So in this part, I'll just read to you. Extensional, and this is going back to earlier in the chapter... Extensional, um, when you think of a term like wall, and you think of intention, you could think of the properties and attributes of the wall. You don't even have to be looking at a, a wall. You could close your eyes, think of the property and attributes, and describe what a wall is to somebody. The extension of a wall is um, your you're referring to a wall that's out there in reality that's literally concrete. You could point to it, you could name it, you know? So in this first um, paragraph right here, uh, let me, in this first paragraph, um, the extensional denoted definition is one that assigns meaning to the term by indicating the members of the class that definite the definitum denotes. Um, there are at least three ways of indicating members of this class. You can point to them. Um, you can name them individually, or you can name them in groups. Um, the three kinds of definitions that result are called demonstrative or ostensive. Um, we'll, we'll say demonstrative, the <clears throat> enumerative or definition by subclass. So let me give you, give you the example of these three. Demonstrative is the easiest. I call that the caveman um, way of showing somebody something. So when they say, hey, what's a chair? You literally point to a chair with your finger and you say, that's a chair, like a caveman. You know, what's a dinosaur? And you point to it, that, you know. So it's easy. Chair means this is, as you point to several chairs, one after another. Washington Monument, you know, you're pointing to it. That's demonstrative. Super easy. And, and again, that's showing a chair out there in reality. Like you're giving, if somebody says, what's a chair? You could either go the intentional route and give them properties and attributes defining it, or you can go the extensional route. And you could say, I'm going to point to it. Here's one. Um, enumerative. Somebody says, you know, what's a chair? Um, you can say, you know, maybe you name a famous chair. But in this example, we'll, ter, uh, we'll use uh, the, the example that Hurley does, actress. So actress, um, and you literally name very specific actresses or even actors. But in this case, actress, Reese Witherspoon, Blake Lively, Emma Stone. Um, so you give very specific names. You're giving an enumerative definition. Baltic state, when somebody says, what's a Baltic state? You say, ah, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. You're giving very specific names of these. That means you're enumerating. We're giving an enumerative definition. And then the third definition by subclass, somebody says, what's a tree? You're giving them examples of different trees that fall you know, into that. So tree means oak, pine, elm, spruce, maple, and the like. Um, I'll read this to you. A definition by subclass assigns meaning to the term by naming, by naming subclasses of the class denoted by the term. So I'm just like that. Um, and it says this definition may be partial um, or complete, depending on how many um, examples you give. And in your homework down below, I'll give you a few examples. There's usually three to five examples of a subclass again flower what do you mean by flower and you name off a bunch rose lily daisy zinnia germania um give me subclasses um fictional work you know poem play novel short story okay so subclass enumerative and demonstrative are all extensional that just means you can give examples of them existing in reality <clears throat> by showing them out there somewhere. They exist. You know, we'll give you an example. Intentional. And intentional, like I said, you can close your eyes or you can connote instead of denoting on the other three examples we just gave you. Now we're going to give you some more on connoting. So 
Intentional and assigns a meaning to a word by indicating the qualities or attributes that the word connotes. And there's um, four ways we can do this. Synonymous. This is pretty easy. Synonymous, I, I, in my note here, I just call it the one worder. Physician, well, you're going to describe physician using properties or attributes. And if you could only choose one word, what would it be? Doctor. You know, what's intentional mean? You can only choose one word, willful. What's observed mean? It means to see. Um, what's, what's another one for professor? You know, I'm a professor. I'm talking to you right now. What's another word for professor? Teacher, right? Or even lecturer. You can only choose one word. What about student? Um, learner? I don't know. So anyways, if you get a one word, it's a synonymous. It means that is synonymous with this, or this is defining that. Okay. C means, or C is defining observed, doctor is defining physician in terms of one word. Um, etymological, this is going back to the origin of the word or where it comes from. Usually these are easy uh, dead giveaways. They're going to be in Latin, Greek, or French, and you're going to see italicized words. For example, again, etymological, going back to uh, the word's origin. Where does it come from? And you get it a lot with a medical terminology. If any of you are going to the medical field, you will, you will get slammed with Latin and Greek. Um, so anyways, for example, the word license is derived from the Latin verb licer, which means to be permitted, right? You can see it italicized. It's Latin. So we know if we see an italicized example, usually it's going to be etymological. Again, I'll show you some examples in your homework. Principle, derived from the Latin principium. Again, this is italicized. It's Latin. It's giving you the very origin of the word principle, and it means beginning or source. We'll give you one more. Um, down here, polygon. It comes from the Greek poly, meaning mini, and ganos, meaning aiding, uh, sorry, angle, so mini angles. And Again, it's uh, italicized. So um, let's move on. Operational. <clears throat> Operational definition. Um, you're looking for the functional description of a term here. So <clears throat> one substance is harder than if and only if. Um, one scratches the other when the two are rubbed together. You're getting a functional description of harder than here. Brain activity, right? It's in quotes, so we got to define it. it. Means that an, an electroencephalograph shows oscillations when attached to a patient's head. There's a functional description of this. Um, a potential difference exists when two conductors, if and only if, um, a Voltimeter shows a reading connected between two conductors or, or another one. Um, a solution is, is an acid, if and only if the litmus paper turns red when it's dipped, you know. So, again, you're looking for some functional description. And here I'll just underline this. Each of these definitions prescribes an operation to be performed. And an operation to be performed is your... your um, you're going to demonstrate what that word means in its functionality or its operation. Um, a lot of this seems wordy, but when I get to the examples, I think it'll be more clear. And last but not least, this will be the hardest for some of you. For some of you, this will be easy, but I, I'd say um, starting out, I mean, there's a lot going on here, but I'll, I'll try to simplify it. Definition by genus and difference. This goes back to Aristotle. He's going to say genus and species. We always hear genus and species when we're going to the zoo and you, and you look at some spider or some lizard and you're like, what the heck? And you don't even know what the name is, right? You look at some long Latin name. It's, it's giving you the species name of the more broader name lizard. Like, you know, it's a lizard, right? Or, you know, it's a snake, but then you get a very specific kind of snake and that's a species. So let me, let me break this down more. Um, so again, I've seen this in different texts by genus and species. Hurley here, we'll call it genus and difference. They're one and the same. 
what are we looking for? Three different things going on with this definition. One is the, the genus. It's the most broad part of it. So we got water. The species, which is ice, you got a certain type of water. And then you got a difference. And what's that mean? Well, it's water, but it's frozen water. So frozen is the difference. It's a quality of the water that makes it ice, which is frozen, right? Um, so let me give you a different. So again, I say genus species, Hurley says genus difference, but you're gonna have three different things going on when you have an example of this trying to define something. What you're gonna have is something very broad, which is the genus. Let's think of something broad here that Hurley gives an is, is example of, offspring, right? Can you think of real quick what kinds of offspring we can have? You, well, you can have female or you can have male, right? So one type of offspring is a daughter. Another type of offspring is a son, right? So when, when we think of genus, very broadly, offspring. What, one type of it, one type of this genus, which is a species called daughter. And, and the difference just means it's female, right? If we were to do the same thing in offspring, which is broad, and another species, which is son, what's the difference? Male. So it's a different property that makes that offspring a son or a daughter, femaleness or maleness. Um, uh, let's do this building. That's really broad, right? You can have all kinds of different buildings, lower buildings, higher buildings, wider buildings, you know, whatever. So that's the more broad term. The species of building, skyscraper, you could have educational building, you could have um, restaurant building. You can think of all kinds of different species, which is a different type of the genus. Again, the genus is more broad. You have more of it out there in reality, right? So the difference of this species, the skyscraper species, is it's very tall. What would be the difference if I said restaurant species, serve food or something about food? That would be the difference maker, you know? Uh, what would be um, school or college, right? What would be the difference? Um, educational. So again, you got three things going on with this. You got the genus, which is very broad. You got the species, which is a very specific type of this broad or type of building, let's say, for example. And then you get the difference, and that's just the quality or the attribute. That's what makes it different. Example. What makes a skyscraper different from an educational building like a college, which is different from a restaurant? You just think of the property's attributes. You're like, oh, one's educational, one serves food, one's like a super high rise, you know, up in the sky, like, you know, a lot taller. But they're all different types of buildings, which is the most broad thing. So, again, um, for some of you, that might be confusing. For some of you, um, not as confusing. Um, I think a good way to see this, let me see if I can pull up, is looking at it like a circle. Um, let me see, it's misspelled, but let's just see. Whoa, that's definitely crazy there. Oh, man. Let's see. So this might be a good example here. Okay, see this writing utensils? Is that a genus or is that a species? Is that more broad of these other things in here or is that more specific? Well, you think about it for a second. It's more broad, right? So I might say draw a huge circle, right? In any one of these terms that you're looking at, for an example, and if it's more broad, it goes on the outside than on the inside, right? ink writers. There's another genus within the genus, right? So ink writers. Is this more broad than a felt tip pen or a ballpoint pen? Or is it more specific? Ah, this is more broad, right? So this is the genus. These two are the species. What's the difference? Think of the difference between these two. One's like a marker, 
marker pen, let's say, because it felt tap. I don't know. It's like you would think um, it's the point of it is different versus ballpoint. Uh, maybe it's a different kind of metal that you're rolling with. So anyways, both of the spe different species, right? You have two species here with inside one genus. Over here, graphite riders. That's broad. These are two different types of graphite riders. They are two different species, right? Again, to see this more broadly, think of animal. Animals really, really broad, right? And then I'm gonna say parrot and tiger. Well, parrot and tiger are just two species of animal, okay? Or think of toy, like T-O-Y, like a toy you play with, right? Toy is very broad. What are two types of toys? I'll think of Legos, and another one I'll think of marbles, let's say. Those are two species of um, toy, and the toy is the genus. What's the difference between a Lego and a marble? Well, one's a ball that rolls, and one's something you build with, you know, little plastic pieces that you click in. So those are the differences. So anyways, I hope I've hashed that out enough on um, genus and species. It is a little bit more difficult. And now let's go into some examples. Don't worry about this chart down here. Okay, so number one, plant means something such as tree, flower, vine, or cactus. And you can only choose between one of these seven. And again, for review, we had three that were extensional, that were demonstrative, enumerative, and subclass. And then we had four that were intentional, synonymous, etymological, operational, and then genus and difference, or genus and species, right? So there's seven possibilities. So think of plant. If you go back up there, I told you that usually if you're going to see three or four words, usually it's a subclass. So again, when we say plant, we're going to name things in a subclass. And this is a subclass example, right? Um, this one, hammer, means a tool used for pounding. Um, if some of you get confused between um, an operational definition and a genus and difference definition or genus and species, genus and species or genus and difference, usually it's going to be a simple three different um, parts to it, right? Operational is going to be a longer sentence, a longer sentence describing more functional or operational terms. So it's going to have more detail. So when you look at two and three, so when we look at two here, hammer, which is a tool for pounding. Which, which one do you think this one might be? Well, it is a genus and species or a genus and difference, right? It is that, right? So that's, I'm just giving you the answer, right? What's the more broad term? What's the genus? Tool, correct. How many different types of tools could you have, like different species? Well, it gives you one hammer. It's a species. Could you have a screwdriver? Yeah, could be another species, right? So you could draw a big circle, right? Put tool on the outside and on the inside, a bunch of little circles, hammer, screwdriver, wrench, right? They're all different species. And then what's the difference between a hammer and a screwdriver and a, and a wrench? Well, a hammer pounds, right? So pounding is the difference. Hammer is the species, tool is the genus. Okay, so there's three different parts to that. Um, three, a triangle is equilateral if and only if the compass, when placed sequentially on two vertices, it properly adjusted, strikes through the other two vertices. Long operational terminology, that is operational. It's an operational definition. What about number four? State. You don't know what a state is, right? So somebody is easy. What's a state? And they go, oh, Ohio, Arkansas, Minnesota, Tennessee. What are they doing? They're naming very specific states, right? So that is enumerative. Go back up and review uh, my little mini lecture here. But you'll see that this is enumerative. What about angel? It's a word that originates from the Greek. Ah, we're either going to go back to Greek, Latin, or French usually. Remember what I just said? And the words italicize, what is it? Etymological definition. Angelos or angelos. It means, means messenger, right? So this is an etymological definition. Why? Because it's, it's showing you where the term originates from. Neophyte, number six. Neophyte means beginner. Go back up. 
And usually if something's a one worder, meaning they're using one word to describe the thing, it is what? That's right, synonymous, meaning the beginner is synonymous with neophyte. Um, using one word to describe that word. Number seven, house means this, and what it's really getting at is it means you point to it with your finger. What was the one thing that I said you could literally point to with your finger? I gave the example of a chair. Um, or a caveman giving you an example of a dinosaur. Yeah, this is demonstrative up in the beginning. So it's a demonstrative definition. You point to it with your finger. It's a house, right? So again, all these are here. Demonstrative, enumerative, subclass, synonymous. And that's pretty much what your homework is. You get these and you identify what they are based upon how they're defining the thing. Um, let's do one more. Ten. Hot means for an electric iron that your wet finger sizzles when placed momentarily in contact with it. Now, let me just tell you, that sucks if your finger is going to sizzle. Don't be putting your finger on hot shit. Anyways, here we go. So what would this be? Well, it looks like we're using operational definition, some functional language, and we are. So it's operational, okay? So what I've done is I've given you a bunch of examples um, of your homework here in um, section 2.4. And again, what, what are we really doing in this chapter? We're giving you different layers of what it means to define um, things, to use language. You know, what are, your, what are your word meanings and how do you get there? And you might say some of these definitional techniques, you can use any one of these seven when you're trying to describe to somebody what something is. You can use synonymous, give them a one word. You can use your finger and point to something. Let me give you an example of how I'm different from my wife. Sometimes I'm like, my wife will say something. I'm like, what's that? And she'll be like, you know, and I'm like, no, I don't know. And then she'll, she'll give me like a one word answer. She'll give me like the um, synonymous. Um, and I'm like, uh, okay, it's still not clear to me. And what I'm getting at is I'm wanting her to give me more detail. <laughs> well, she just doesn't want to sometimes. So just throw a synonym or synonym out there. So anyways, we all have different ways of defining things for people. And again, what would your professor recommend? Be more precise. You can pick any one of these ways, right? But depending on the situation and circumstance, you might say, uh, let's say somebody doesn't know what an actress is. Well, I'm going to give them a bunch of names of famous and then they say, oh, okay, I got it. I know what that means. Or Bitcoin, right? I'm talking about Bitcoin. It's a form of cryptocurrency. Somebody says, what's a Bitcoin? You're like, cryptocurrency. You might say you've just given them a synonymous definition, a one-worder, right? Somebody else might say, um, you know, Ethereum or Bitcoin or blah, blah, blah. And they start going down, they're naming, right? So what's naming? They're giving you enumerative definitions of cryptocurrency. Um, so anyways, there you go. Any other questions? Just let me know. Um, Otherwise, yes, this concludes our little mini lecture for section 2.4. Uh, so that's about it. All right.